Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to take a look at how you can bind the skin weight of the facial bones for humanoid characters in Character Creator 4 after completion of the Acarig process to create a body skeleton. If you are not yet familiar with Acarig or humanoid characters, please refer to the tutorials on our Reillusion Courses page. Okay, let's start off at the beginning by checking the skin weight of the body bones. On screen, we have a character that has just been assigned a body rig using the Acarig application, and you can see the type is set to humanoid. We can apply a quick test motion to see how the rig performs. If you want to check the skin weights for the body, simply go to the Attributes tab in the Modify panel and choose Skin Weights. We'll select the body, and after I do, you can select individual bones, either from the Bone Manager hierarchy or from the viewport to see the heat map that demonstrates the strength of the binding at different distances from the actual bone. This essentially dictates how much that part of the mesh is influenced by the movement of that particular bone. However, if we use the filters to only see the head bones, you'll see that aside from the CC base head bone, which is used for head rotation, none of the other weight values have been assigned. Even if we go to proportion and try to test the bone weight, nothing will move. Therefore, we need to do this manually. Let's start with assigning the eye bones so that the eyeballs can move. We'll start by hiding all of the other meshes in the C manager since we don't need them now. Then, in the Bone Manager panel, you'll want to ensure that we've selected CC Base Eye Bones. If they're not showing correctly, you can try to click on the Show Bone button again to refresh. You can also hold Control and right click to select the bone. In this case, I'm going to go into Selection Mode at the top and click one of the vertexes on the left eye mesh. You can expand the selection to make sure the entire mesh is selected. From there, you can use one of the Quick Replace presets. It's important to note here that a black color represents a weight value of 0, while a white color represents a value of 1. You can see on this spectrum the gradual weight values in between. In this case, since we want the entire eye mesh to rotate, we need to choose a universal value of 1 for the whole mesh which will turn the entire eye white. You can follow the same process to set the maximum weight value for the right eye as well. From there, we can exit skin weight mode and head over to proportion mode to test the rotation result of the eyes. Looks good so far, so now it's time to head over to the facial profile editor to assign the blend shapes for our character. If you're not familiar with this tool, we have an introductory tutorial on our Reillusion Courses page. Start by clicking on Edit Expressions at the top, and then you want to locate the Eye Look category and use the Proportion tool at the bottom. Then rotate the left eye all the way to the left. You can then proceed to Exit Proportion Editing Mode and click on the little lightning bolt beside the left eye look parameter to set that value. You can repeat the process for the right eye and then continue to set all of the other parameters according to their description, after which we recommend using the specific test motion for the eyes to test the result. Okay, let's move on to the jaw now, which is a bit more complex. Before we begin, we can go over to the scene manager and hide the tongue and teeth, which we won't need here. For the next step, Let's define our head as a separate mesh to avoid any part of the body mesh being affected. To do that, exit the Skin Weight tool and enter into the Edit Mesh tool. From there, you'll need to switch to Element Select Mode and pick the head mesh. To define it as a separate mesh, simply click on Extract Mesh and you'll see it added as a separate mesh to the Scene Manager. I'll just name it a bit more appropriately and then continue on to setting the skin weights for our jaw movement. Since we're defining the skin weight for the jaw, let's ensure that we first select the CC base jaw root in the Bone Manager. You can toggle Show Bone to ensure you have the right bone selected. From there, I'll enter into Selection Mode to begin the binding process. I'll start by selecting a few vertices in the center of the jaw mesh and then expand the selection. 
You can also hold control and manually select additional vertices to add them as well. From there, I'm going to set the weight of the selection to 1 so that when we rotate the jaw root bone, the mesh will follow along. To test it, I'll exit skin weight and go into proportion and rotate the jaw. You'll notice the results are not ideal as essentially the gradient of the weighting values is too sharp. To resolve this, I'll leave the character's jaw slightly open and return to skin weight mode. Again, with the jaw root selected, I'll manually select the vertices directly around the currently weighted area and set the weight value to 0 0.9. From there, I'll repeat the process and set the value of those vertices to 0 0.75. You're probably sensing a pattern here, and essentially what you want to do is to create a gradient with lower values the further away you get from the focal point of the chin. Again, you'll want to go to proportion mode to test out the results. Unfortunately, you can now see another issue where the corner of the mouth is stretching. So once again, let's return to skin weight mode and select the vertices around the mouth opening and set them to a slightly lower value of 0 0.9. Again, what we want to do here is create a gradient around the mouth opening with increasingly lower values. The mouth can be the trickiest part of the jaw skin weighting, and not every character will have the same structure. If you find there are vertices that you can't select due to overlapping mesh, you'll want to go into wireframe display mode in the scene manager which will allow you to see beyond the surface mesh and select vertices that may be hidden. Due to the complexity of the vertex selection, particularly on the inner mouth, you can see why it's a good idea to hide all the other meshes and focus only on the head mesh. Each model will take some trial and error and present different challenges, but essentially, what you want to do is create as smooth of a weight gradient as you can, particularly around the sensitive areas like the mouth. The last thing you want to do is bind the skin weight for the teeth and tongue. So this time, I'll hide all of the meshes except for the lower teeth and enter into skin weight mode. Since the lower teeth will follow along with the jaw movement, we want to again select the jaw root. Again, I'll use selection mode to ensure all of the vertices for the lower teeth mesh are selected and set the weight value for the entire mesh to 1. Same thing goes for the upper teeth, but in this case, we want to have the upper jaw selected instead. To test them both out, we'll go into proportion mode and rotate the respective bones. Looks okay, so let's proceed again to the facial profile editor panel to refine the blend shape values for the jaw. Again, Use the quick set lightning bolt icon and rotate the jaw down. You'll see the lower teeth follow along as they have already been 100% weighted to the jawbone. Finally, for the tongue, we want to isolate that mesh and once again move into skin weight mode. You'll notice that there are actually three bones defined for the tongue, so it's a bit more complicated than the teeth since the tongue needs to curl. So the first thing to do here is select base tongue 01 and then proceed to set the skin weights for the base of the tongue. Again, doing your best to create a gradual decrease in weighting closer to the edge of the tongue. In the case of the tongue, the weighting of the child bones will overlap and in the end, you should have a result like shown here for the three different bone skin weights. Okay, we're done. Now if you go into proportion mode again and test out the jaw, you'll see the tongue move along with the lower jaw. You can also import in your other facial blend shapes for things such as brows, cheeks, and more. However, we recommend using an external modeling program for the final details like those. We also have a tutorial on our Relusion Courses page specifically for that. Feel free again to test the results. It's a trial and error process, so you may find yourself doing this often. 
However, once it's all finished, you'll have a fully functional character that is compatible with iClone's arsenal of both body and facial motion tools, including automatic lip syncing and detailed facial motion capture. Thanks for watching everyone, and be sure to check back on our channel for the newest developments in character rigging and animation. I'll see you in the next video.